Okay, my partner and I from today's topic resolve. Social networking sites have had a positive impact on the United States. As my partner and I from this interesting debate statement, we will first define what a social networking site is. The University of California, Berkeley defines a social networking site as simply a website in which individuals construct a profile or page into which they can communicate with other people that share the same interests as them, even living halfway across the world. Take Facebook or MySpace as examples. While both these sites contain over 200 million users per month, according to Michael Arrington from TechCrunch.com, we have observed over a series of positive effects and impacts these websites have had on ourselves as well as the people that surround us. Among those positive effects include being able to talk to friends or family members across the world, creating new and stronger friendships, finding long-lost family members, and even helping the economy in its biggest crisis since the Great Depression by employing those who work in the website companies. Along with all those positive effects is the population's health. According to wikiAnswers.com, over 45 million Americans don't have health insurance, and with all these medical social networking sites, it can mean salvation for some. The standard we would like to put out there would be that social networking sites have impacted several sectors of the economy and aspects of life, such as health. As we deepen the explanation further, these sites are not only used in an individual entertainment-based way, but as you will see, they are also used to help our nation as a whole. Our first contention consists of social networking sites being able to save lives of many through websites such as Sermo.com, where licensed physicians collaborate on confusing clinical cases. One such story comes from a doctor who works for the University of Minnesota Medical Center by the name of Dr. Tomlin. In his medical case, the patient came to him in shocking circumstances where one of his eyes was protruding from its socket. He came up with many possible considerations for the diagnostic, but all came back negative. That is when Dr. Tomlin decided to seek further suggestions at Sermer.com where 25,000 other doctors like him visit this site regularly and where he finally found his answer. The patient was suffering from rhabdomycercoma, a rapid growing cancer usually found in young children. Thanks to this helpful insight, Dr. Tomlin's patient was able to receive treatment for his eye before the cancer proceeded any further. Again, over 45 million Americans in the U.S. don't have medical insurance and therefore aren't able to visit a doctor regularly as is recommended. So if any of these individuals have a headache or a simple sprained ankle, their injuries go untreated most of the time. Websites like Sermo.com could be the only hope these people have left, and therefore it would be an unreasonable statement to say social networking sites react negatively upon our population. Over 10 million other people use other medical social networking sites like this one according to Alexia.com. In our next contention, we will discuss how social networking sites have not only helped our economy by creating more jobs, but also by the act of more consumption through business ads posted on social networking sites. Let's take Dominique Graham, for example. She started her new business in artificial sleeves, where if you have a tank top, for example, and your arms get cold, you use, <laughs> you use her arm sleeves that cover different colors, designs, and sizes. Dominique decided to campaign her new business through Facebook and MySpace, where she states she has gotten a very positive response. Consequently, your business is well on its way to the fashion industry of today. Many businesses, just like this one, have reported an increase in consumption due to their ads on MySpace that going to the Web Dev Designs website. And websites such as Facebook and MySpace display ad sales rose almost 13% to $1.9 billion, according to a recent report from the Interactive Advertising Bureau and PricewaterhouseCoopers. Due to the fact that these small businesses decided to put their ads up on these websites, Small businesses alone have generated 60 to 80 percent of annual net new jobs in the U.S. in the past this decade or so, according to smallbusinessnotes.com. So social networking sites have helped, uh, have helped put up ads for these small businesses, and small businesses make up 60 to 80 percent of jobs in the U.S. This means social networking sites have had a part in the growth of our economy. The importance of small businesses to our economy is quite clear. As you can already see, social networking sites have already overcome two of the most immense problems in the U.S. is facing today, that being the population's health and, of course, the economy. These social networking sites have saved lives, provided jobs, and increased the consumption of business all around the U.S. I aspire you, the judges, to come into agreement with me and my partner. We will hope to obtain your vote. Vote of the minute. Stephanie and I negate today's topic. On resolve, on unbalanced social networking sites have had a positive impact on the United States. The important term in, in today's debate is social networking, which is, pub, which is public website interaction with people around the world, 
which our three arguments to it would be safety, hackers, and job risks. If my partner Stephanie, Stephanie and I prove to you that social networking has had negative impact on the United States, then we will win today's debate. Our first contention is that it's never safe to be on a social networking site, no matter how old you might be, especially the underage who lie about their age to join as a SNS like Facebook or MySpace. Since MySpace are the, are the in things to create, almost everybody has one in the United States. According to Wharton University in Pennsylvania, studies show that there are 70 million people creating MySpace accounts. Even little 10-year-old girls pretend to be 14 in order to create an account and be like their friends. Ashley Anderson, a writer of Sweet101.com, a comprehensive independent online magazine written and edited by professionals trusted by over 50 million monthly readers, reported, the more popular MySpace or Facebook gets, the more chances people have of getting in contact with a stalker, predator, or others who may cause harm to an individual. According to the OVC, Office of Victims of Crimes, a national site under the U.S. Department of Justice, one million women get stalked on social networking sites in the United States. The reason for this victimization in the stalker is the stalker wants to control your lives. The victim becomes the stalker's source of self-esteem, and the loss of the relationship becomes the stalker's greatest fear. This dynamic makes the stalker dangerous. Stalking, stalking cause, causes that emerge from domestic violence situations, however, are the most lethal type of stalking. Our second contention is about hackers and hacking. Hackers are the people who illegally break into your social networking site, like MySpace or Facebook, and get your personal information. According to Kaspersky Lab, a, a leading developer of secure content management systems, they have found two new worms called Coopface and Coopface V, which attract Facebook and MySpace users by comments, messages, and links. These viruses hack into your computer and steal your credit card number and more personal information. The third and final contention we have for you today is that social networking hurts your possible chances of getting a professional job. On your MySpace page or your Facebook page, you may have your pictures from your wild birthday party a few years ago, oh, a few days ago. It may have very inappropriate pictures in callous language. Your soon-to-be boss could see this page of yours and see how immature and irresponsible you are. Let's say he thought you were a very responsible person, but keeping your guard down on these sides can hurt you a lot. If you don't get a lot of jobs in the United States, in the United States, it doesn't help our economy. According to Jackie Cannoli, a career counselor and former headhunter, a personal recruiter for a corporation or executive requirement agency explained, your Facebook or MySpace pages will be some of the first potential employers see since these social networking sites have such high age rankings, meaning they'll appear at the very top of search engine results. As you can see, the more you let your guard down on a job interview, the less you have a chance of helping the economy. Therefore, we can see that social networking sites does not have a positive impact on the United States. Stephanie and I strongly advise you to write a negative about them. 